<laughs> okay. <clears throat> Recording, streaming live. Okay, here we go. Uh, call the meeting, uh, the July meeting of the Town of Rochester Town Board to order. Uh, we'll do the pledge to the flag. I will turn my computer to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, United States of America, of America and to the republic for which, which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice for all. For all. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Kate, would you do the roll call, please? Councilwoman Ann Allen? Here. Councilman Hagen DePew? Here. Councilman Hewitt? <clears throat> Councilman Paddock? Here. Supervisor Baden? Here. Okay. Uh, confirm with the town's council that tonight's meeting has been convened in accordance with the governor's March 13, 2020 executive order 202.1 which suspends certain provisions of the open meetings law to allow a municipal board to convene a meeting via video conferencing. In accordance with the executive order, the public has been provided with the ability to view tonight's meeting via YouTube and a transcript will be provided at a later date. The town clerk has completed a roll call of the town board members. There's a quorum present for this meeting. I've also confirmed with the town clerk that this meeting has been duly noticed. We have fulfilled our legal notice requirements by posting notice on the town clerk bulletin board and outside door, posting legal notice in the Shangam journal. Was, was this one in the journal or the Freeman, Kate? Journal. Okay, thank you. And posting notice on the town's website. <clears throat> so uh, our first order of business is a public hearing for local law 2020. Uh, this is amending chapter 132 vehicles and traffic of the code of the town of Rochester. And I am going to put that up on the screen. Uh, we don't have appear to have anybody here for that. Uh, sorry, one second. I thought I had it set up to go, but apparently I don't. Okay, <clears throat> local law three. This is a local law amending vehicle and traffic, uh, chapter 132. 132-2B uh, will be replaced as follows. What we are doing is adding in trails and road on both sides of the road from the intersection with Diamond Road to the terminus of Trails End Road. Um, so that is uh, the local law. Um, I would ask uh, uh, for a motion to close the public hearing since there's nobody present. Can you just make sure Kate didn't get any comments? Oh yeah, you didn't in? get any written comments, no. Kate? Yeah. No. I, I did receive one verbal comment from the neighbor who uh, uh, it wasn't specific to the public hearing just to let me know that they were continuing after their initial call to me to, to experience problems up there, but it wasn't specific to the uh, public hearing. It was just to make me aware of the situation. And they were thrilled that we were moving forward with this. So. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please, Kate. Councilwoman Anawan? Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew? Aye. Councilman Hewitt? Councilman Paddock? Aye. Supervisor Baden? Aye. Um, next, we have to do part two and three of Seeker. <clears throat> um, I shared with you a draft of that. Uh, does anybody want me to put that up on the screen? If not, uh, I would uh, say that it is a small or no impact for all items. And I would uh, make this resolution. Let me share this resolution on the screen. Uh, sorry, one, one second.
You guys don't hear my kids fighting, do you? Just a little, but not bad. <laughs> I'll put it. <in. laughs> um, Mike, one the on the um on the second part of the seeker. Uh, yes. you just left question eight is blank. I think oh. I think you meant to have no, but we should. Yeah, um, I will correct that. Thank you for that information. Before I submit it to Kate, I will correct that. I just apologies, I missed checking that one. Um, so I would ask for uh, this resolution, uh, the town board determine local law three of 2020, amending chapter 132 vehicle and traffic of the code of town of Rochester as being an unlisted action under seeker and declares a negative declaration having reviewed parts one and two of the short form environmental assessment form having determined that local law number three of 2020 will not result in a significant adverse environmental impact and consequently no eis will be prepared uh, do i have that resolution i'll make the motion and do i have a second i'll, I'll second. second okay this one is a roll call vote anyway so kate councilwoman and allen Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew. Aye. Councilman Hewitt. Councilman Paddock. Aye. Supervisor Baden. Aye. Okay. Uh, next uh, public comment report. Kate, uh, did you receive anything from the public? I did not receive anything other than um, you put an email on my desk last week. Was that supposed to be for public comment from Zorian Pinsky? I meant to ask you about it and I forgot till I got I, home. To I'll be honest, I don't remember the uh, putting one from Zori and I remember there was one from, from I believe Zali that I shared with the board members. It wasn't necessarily public comment, the one from Zali, it was just a, a communication. Okay, this was, um, he said, I want to lower my public comments, please bring them to the board's attention about advocating for a noise ordinance, remember that? I don't. I'm sorry. I don't remember okay. it came from me. So maybe, maybe, some, maybe Shirley put it there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So then I'll read it. Um, yeah, I don't think I've seen it. Uh, okay. So. Okay. Um, it says um, two, two different topics. One is advocate for the board to actively work on establishing a town's noise ordinance, perhaps by utilizing positive experience from other municipalities of the comparable size and community character. The practice, for example, is the past community reaction um, on this matter and show that the ordinance is way overdue. The second um, suggestion is start aggressively and creatively enforcing town law about responsibility of owner to maintain their properties in a safe, clean and sanitary condition. Do not tolerate unauthorized junkyards. Specifically, it's related to a few properties along Route 209, which is the face of the town. I propose for situations when a property owner can't afford cleaning of the property but agrees or desires to do so establish a town cleaning fund which residents of the town can directly um, make donations to a non-deductible contribution. And this was from Zorian Pinsky. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I definitely did not see that, Kate. So if you could share that with myself and the board members, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, attorney for the town report, Mary Lou. She didn't, she didn't Mary unmute. Did. There you go. There you go. So anyway, that was my long way of saying I have nothing to report. <laughs> Got it. So I muted myself. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, is there any update or further on Van Tine Road or from the... I am still waiting. Rich said he has a whole bunch of papers to get together for me. I remind him every once in a while. So I don't know okay. if he just has a lot on his plate right now, but I have not gotten okay. anything further from him okay. in some time. And nothing further from the DEC or the DA that you can nope. talk about. So. No. Nope. Okay. Um, supervisor's report uh, is filed with the town clerk. I emailed you all a copy of it today. Uh, we are doing very well financially. Um, I am quite happy to see that we are not seeing the impact of the COVID yet. 
uh, I suspect though, we just got our mortgage uh, tax payment from the county, but that is only through the end of March. I suspect the next one will be considerably lower. And I also suspect our sales tax uh, uh, receipts that we will get just based on what the city of Kingston gets their sales tax paid to them every month. And they are seeing about a 50% decline from what they normally see. So I think we need to be prepared that we will, uh, <clears throat> we will be uh, running into problems sooner rather than later. Uh, however, we have a very uh, healthy budget and uh, we are in decent shape and we don't have a lot of uh, extra spending or, or we don't have a lot of reliance in our funding on too many state and uh, county things where we'll see our impacts. Clearly recreation payments are gonna be down, but then our expenditures and recreation are also down. Uh, so they will probably wash each other out. We are down clearly in, in court revenue. Uh, uh, there is Councilman Hewitt. Let me get him in. Um, and, uh, well, you're getting him in. Um, mortgage may be better than you expected. I don't know if it will be this quarter, but maybe next quarter. Real estate is going crazy right now because yeah. people want to move out of the city. The uh, building department is going crazy with uh, uh, title searches, right? Title searches and, and building permit applications. Yeah. Uh, which is why we authorized uh, Brianna to do five hours a week uh, to assist Becky to get caught up on all those title searches and things. <clears throat> um, Quick question, Mike. How much was that check? How much was it for? Um, I emailed it to you today. It okay. was approximately one hundred thousand. Uh, it was slightly more than one hundred thousand. Okay. And that was for the six-month period. I believe it is October, November, December, January, February, March is what I, what I remember it is. Okay. And, and then we will get another, we get it twice a year. So the next one will be starting in April through September. And I think we get that check in October or November. Um, so our, our, the mortgage tax year doesn't follow quite follow our calendar year. Um, Revenues from the town clerk for the month of June, uh, $46,741.75. Um, our revenue for the month of June, which is not totally 100% up to date because that uh, our June payments from the town clerk end up in our, we get that, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, our July payments, no, our June payments, we get, uh, I got them today. So they're not reflected in this. They're always a month behind. But we have uh, received to date in the general fund, uh, $1,155,499.85 which is uh, 50, approximately 57% of our budgeted revenue. And we are at the halfway point now. Uh, so we are in decent shape. Uh, our expenditures in, on the general fund, we have spent 43% of our budgeted. Uh, we have spent uh, $898,377.82. And our highway fund is looking equally good. Uh, they have uh, spent 47% of the budgeted and they have received back 75% of their revenue. However, uh, a large chunk of their revenue is in taxes because they don't have the revenue streams that we have other than chips and a few other uh, sources of minor sources of revenue. So um, we did uh, apply for CHIPS funding in June. Uh, we should be getting that check sometime in July. Uh, 
What we were able to put in that is the purchase of the truck that we ordered last year that we didn't get until February or March um, of this year. And we will get 100% reimbursement for that truck, which is uh, 207,000 plus. And that check should be coming in uh, sometime by the end of this month. And then in our next chip payment, um, Jeff, uh, I don't know if he's actually on the call, but Jeff will can talk about it. We will get reimbursement for the chip seal and the paving that we're doing now. As a matter of fact, today we, we paved a, a large section of Antine Road. Um, June 2020 payments, uh, general fund. Uh, $94,957.18. Highway fund, $103,214.80. Street lighting fund, $394.61. And the grant account, $1,148.07. Uh, COVID report, uh, the uh, Ulster County, uh, is scheduled as of now to move into phase four tomorrow. Um, this allows opening of a lot more of uh, uh, businesses that previously may not have already been opened. It relaxes certain standards. It continues to keep uh, malls and theaters closed and gyms closed. Um, I will tell you, New Paltz is working though with their gym. Uh, they have moved the equipment outside and apparently it is allowed to be utilized outside as long as they're outside of their normal indoor situation. Um, or at least they were working on that. I don't know if, exactly if they did that. <clears throat> uh, shared work program. We continue uh, with our six employees. It is working very well. Uh, they uh, certify on Sunday at the end of the work week and they are receiving their money by Tuesday, direct deposited into their bank account. That actually is quicker than uh, if they were working because payroll comes out on Thursday. So they're getting uh, either 50% or 60% of their money uh, through the shared work program through New York State. Uh, it's through the unemployment program, but it is not being charged to the town. The federal government is, is paying that. They also qualify for the additional $600 uh, stimulus funding that is through the end of July. Uh, as of now, it does not look likely that that will be extended. And we will probably want to be able to make a decision in August if we continue the shared work program. They still will be making the majority of, of their money. They just would not make the 100% of their normal money without that 600. Um, with the 600, I don't deny they are making more than, uh, than usual because the 600 is not prorated. A uh, quick reminder for everybody and for all the town board members, please, please, please remind your friends, neighbors, family, fill out your census form. I have not checked in a couple of weeks, but town of rochester was sitting at 47 percent uh pretty steady uh we i'm guessing we probably are now over 50 but we want to get that number up uh and as a reminder if you don't fill it out somebody's going to come knocking on your door and uh, they'll fill out the form with you uh probably uh my guess is that will start in uh they said late july or early august originally that was going to start in may but it's been pushed uh, now to later in the year. A um, couple other quick supervisor uh, update reports. Camp Robtov, um, been getting a lot of phone calls, fielding a lot of phone calls. There's a lot of chatter on Facebook and next door Rochester about it. Uh, overnight camps are closed by the state health department. They cannot operate. That being said, there was a lawsuit filed by a number of camps, uh, Roftov not being one of them, that was heard last Tuesday by a federal judge. He, ex and Mary Lou, stop me if I'm wrong on anything. He extended it through uh, written comments through the end of Wednesday um, with the 
a Fourth of July holiday. I didn't know if we would see a ruling today. To my knowledge, one did not come out today. I'm sure there would have been great uh, posts one way or the other if they had come out, and I have seen nothing. So my guess is it was not released yet. Yeah, I've been watching all day, and I haven't seen a decision. Yeah. Um, that being said, Ravtov has applied to both the town and the county uh, to operate as a day camp. Uh, the county issues their health department permit on behalf of the state. The town is responsible for fire safety and, and the zoning statute. Um, the town has not ruled on anything yet. We are, we are pe waiting pending what come, the outcome of that overnight camp decision is because if, uh, if that is overturned, then they will be allowed to operate. If that is not overturned, then we will have to review. Um, I don't know the status of the county. I believe they have, I believe they have not issued a permit, but I don't know that 100%. Um, also, people have asked about the Hudson Valley Resort. Uh, they are allowed to operate as accommodations, as a hotel. They must follow uh, health department guidelines. Uh, a number of people have expressed concern that they feel it's being run as a camp. I have asked the health department to uh, look into that and follow through with it. Um, similar is the uh, location on Granite Road, which many people consider to be a summer camp because people come there during the summer, but that is also accommodations. The dormitory style housing is closed. They are uh, able to use the cabin bungalow style housing. And they, I do know the county did issue a health department permit for that place to operate. Um, I've gotten a number of calls. I have driven by myself and uh, witnessed that the gates have been mostly closed. There are signs on the gate saying, if you need admittance, call a certain phone number. They have a, a uh, security team posted at the gate to uh, um, check people as they're coming in. So it does appear that they are operating within the rules. They had a, a construction project that is still ongoing. And I know the construction crews are in working on that building. I have seen them in there working. Um, and uh, some people have asked about uh, the people from that group walking on, this, on the roads, along the roads. It's no different than uh, any resident of Rochester walking on the roads. They are allowed to walk on the roads. So um, just getting the information out there. Uh, Towpath Road continues to also be uh, uh, one of the things I get the most phone calls about. Um, I have uh, made it regular practice to go by there. The other day I went by and stood at the top of the hill and spoke to the people. The majority of the cars were parked respectfully and completely off the road. Uh, there were three to my left that were parked entirely on the road. I announced that they should be moved. Uh, did not make a huge deal about it. Left, came back an hour later. One was moved, one was gone, and the third one remained. Um, I have witnessed that most people are honoring the uh, no parking area where the Accord Fire District gets their water. I have only seen one car parked there in the last month. And uh, that gentleman did not like that I asked him to move and inform me he was local and knew, wh knew why he was parked there and it was okay. And I informed him he should move his car. And uh, when I came back a little while later, he was gone. So um trying to uh just remind people that uh we can't say they can't swim there but we have to make sure the road stays open uh with that being said jeff and i have investigated the idea of putting some guardrail up further down away where people try to park but they're mostly on the road uh, we think the guardrail will uh, deter people because if they can't get off the road even a little bit, maybe they won't park there. So uh, that's all I have. Uh, a quick question on the guardrail. Yep. How much does that narrow the road for the fire trucks? 
doesn't. It's it's off the pavement. Uh, the guardrail will be on the off the pavement in our right of way. Uh, what it would do is there's about three feet off the edge of the road where people try to park, but the most the majority of the car is still on the road. With the guardrail, they wouldn't be able to park off the road. They would be totally on the road. So the hope is that it would think twice about parking there. But uh, the guardrail, and Jeff has additional guardrail that is not slated for any particular project. So he's investigating it. I don't know if 100% yet if we're going to do it, but he's looking into it for me. OK, Mike, on the off shot that the program for the camps goes through, who's responsible to make sure that the number of campers match the permit, the sewer permit, match the limit on the sewer? Well, the number. limit isn't on the sewer permit. The limit is on the, 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 the camp permit to operate. Right, but it's, so. it's still geared to the sewage. That would be the, who would be responsible is the health department because they, the state health department issues all camp permits. The town does not issue that. No, I know the town didn't, but my question was, we know they exceed that permit most of the time, especially the one on Cherrytown by at least double. Well, and that, that's what that's the, the county health department are the ones who are, we don't have any authority to enforce it. So the county yeah, health that's, department. Can. That's county enforcement. And, you know, there's, we know, and do we have evidence? Uh, Lots of times we know in our hearts and in our minds what's happening, but bus you have, to, you have to have the evidence. Bus count last year with standing room and standing people on the buses. I did the count for the buses and okay. I had spoken with uh, Carol Fisher, who told me about the size of the buses okay. and there was standing room only on those buses. So if you took the count, they had well exceed that permit Okay, number. so if that happens again, call the county, and as long as you're willing to be a witness, they have a case. I would have been a witness last year, but well, somebody's got to call them. So, but that's who you call. That's a it's a good question because yeah. it's definitely a problem. Right. So if that happens, call the county health department. Or the board we can have, contact. We only have. Oh, I would. The town only has ability over over fire fire code, and and uh, the zoning permit to operate the camp. That's okay, all we so have. if if they're exceeding population in there, would that? I wonder if that would fall under fire code. I guess that would that's be. Why I would. That would be a question I would ask Jerry, and if if we think they are, I will I will pose that to him. That question. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. And I and I already plan if 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 they are end up operating as a whether it, as a day camp or or an overnight camp, we will be up there again, making sure the buses are not stacking up on on Cherrytown. Uh, you know, we will we will be monitoring it very carefully, and you know I you you all know I live near there, and I I have been <laughs> driving by and and keeping a very close eye on every uh every aspect of that camp right now and there trucks have been going in with deliveries and they're allowed to i know i know they're allowed to they can bring in deliveries all they want uh people can be in the camp they just can't have they can't be operating a camp with campers they, people can be on the premises and that's I, that's a phone call i keep getting people call me and say there's people in the camp and my answer is they're allowed to be in the camp do we know if not running a camp do we know if aboard the bus, if they have to uh, adhere to the uh, mask or six foot rule, if they're standing, if they're standing I, and seated on a bus? That would be yes. a health department question. I don't know because. Under the camp guidelines that the state health department put out, yes. They would have to follow social distancing rules well, they by either, either being apart be, or having the mask. They would either have to be masked or be six feet apart, one or the other. Interesting. So. I wonder how that'll happen on a bus full of kids. <laughs> okay. We, Thank you. we can imagine all we want, but until it actually happens, they haven't done anything wrong. 
So yeah, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. The, the proof being in the pudding. Yep. Agreed. And Agreed. the difference, Mike, the difference is the day camp is that they, the campers would come and then leave. The campers would be bussed in and bussed back out at night. Um, what is unclear to me is whether the counselors would be allowed to stay overnight or not. Um, I don't have clear guidelines or answers on that yet. Yeah, and the, these are things that I am discussing with the building department, but let's wait and see what this decision is because if yeah. the judge says there's overnight camp, then it's you know, the then there's overnight camp. overnight camp, then they will be allowed to operate overnight right. camp. Right, and if, if not, were, we'll see yeah. what, if anything, they can do. But I'm sure if the overnight camp is allowed to operate, they will be operating with, uh, with COVID uh, uh, guidelines. So, Absolutely. Um, I'm just checking because I thought Chris came in, but I don't see him. He's here. He is. It's just because I have my screen made smaller than I guess. He's waving, waving. There's a little, <laughs> there's a little arrow. You can, there's a little arrow. <laughs> okay. Um, any further questions on that? If not, thank you. Um, department updates, liaison reports. Uh, I emailed you the report from... Uh, Mr. Dunham today from the Board of Assessment Review. Uh, that was all the cases that they acted on. Um, also emailed you his report. Um, I'm just looking real quick to see if I have here in front of me. <laughs> While I'm searching, does anybody else have a report they would like to make? I can do the court report if you want, Mike. Please. As much as there is. Um, Mike and myself and, and Judge Laflamme and the two clerks had a meeting with on mask and, and, and with six foot doing all the good COVID things and um, trying to work through a process of moving people through the court. And Judge Laflamme's solution, one of her solutions is to schedule court appointments just about like if you went to the doctor and, and leaving enough room and hopefully for the decisions and things. In the annex, and, and of course there would be a station, several stations with um, sanitizer, wipes and whatever. And there would be masks available. Everyone coming into court would have to be masked. Um, the annex part, I believe the wall has been painted and Judge Laflamme would like to get the files moved out of the cloakroom so that the public defender, not public defender, whoever the defendant is with their attorney can go back if, there and talk. If I can add to that, B, uh, Judge Shaheen came by today and borrowed a hand truck and was going there this afternoon to start moving files. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay, so, I hope uh, he knew that he has to empty the drawers before he tries to move the files. Uh, I hope he's okay. We gave him Somebody a hand truck check. from the highway department that he borrowed and uh, he went off on his way, so. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, B, while I was searching through my paperwork here, I, I found the mortgage, uh, it's $100,000. $450.09. Okay. You're off a mere little bit there. Yep. Thank you. Um, other correspondence, and my apologies, uh, from Bert Samuelson from the County Planning Department. We have two properties that have applied to be in the Ag District uh, for 2020, and they are working their way through the process right now. Uh, everything is a little delayed because of the COVID. Normally they would be on this right by now. Um, we got a communication and Mary Lou, I would ask if you would look into this one. Uh, it's notice that a civil suit may be filed uh, about uh, uh, foundation of a home. Uh, it's, it's, I don't wanna name the property or the person, but uh, 
uh, I emailed you the information. Apparently they had a, a, an engineer or architect do some studies and sent that. Um, it doesn't appear, he do, doesn't say who they are considering suing, but he just uh, made us aware of it. Okay, that should be um, sent to the insurance company. Okay. If it was sent to us for whatever yeah, reason. It, it's, it's, it just says a civil suit will be, uh, will be uh, filed. And that's all so, it says at this point. All right, so you said you sent that to me. When did you send it? Today. All right, I did not see that, but I it's, will that, it's with all the other communications. Oh, it, it's, okay. it's in the file labeled communications. Okay, thank you. Uh, and maybe I didn't send it to you. Maybe I only sent it to the board members. I'll double check. Yeah, in communications, I think I just got the um, the financial reports for the general fund and the a, highway fund. It was a second uh, folder in that same file. Okay. All so, right. I'll look again. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we did receive two uh, just emails, uh, one regarding the constabulary and one regarding the building department. Um, oh, and very exciting news. <clears throat> I haven't heard it officially yet from the uh, Burke County Personnel Office. However, Ashley received a letter. She scored number one on the county test uh, for recreation directors. Wait, I was muted. I wanted to go, yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> My reaction to her was, of course you did. Uh, I, and I'm not I, surprised. Uh, I'm not surprised at all. So we will eventually be getting notice, I'm sure, from the county personnel. Uh, they have to tell us the top three scores. I think undoubtedly we will uh, confirm Ashley uh, both as our provisional recreation director and as the number one score. And uh, very exciting news and uh, I'm thrilled for her and she is beyond thrilled and really proud of, of all the hard work she put into it. So, um, she should be to become number one on a list. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. Ah, here we go. The assessor's report. Uh, <clears throat> he's been working on a review of the inventory of parcels in the town and starting in June. He's starting a project to complete the parcels that need to be reviewed prior to last, year, last year's roll. He has inspected 283 parcels as of June 1st. Um, he's also working on some summer projects, a data verification project. He's processing a backlog of real property transfers from the county, and I will tell you they are slow in coming in to us. And he is entering zoning codes on the RPS system for any parcels that are missing their zoning designation. Uh, so that is what uh, the assessor's office is working on. <clears throat> um, Aaron, anything on transfer station or uh, I see you're nodding, so. Uh, just that it's getting busy and um, I, I'm gonna help Harry out with a couple issues. Uh, we should, I coordinated with um, the UCRA on some images for updating our recycling bin. And I, I promised Harry I'd get him some, some more signage with images of what not to put in the bin this week. Um, and then hopefully we can get the compactor fixed because that's been a, a difficult, but I told him I'd help out with that too, so. Do you yeah, I, have- Aaron, to let you know, I called Tim Rose and left him a voicemail message now twice on that. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to call the reach out directly to Charlie, yeah, I, operations I, manager. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. I, I I tried going to Tim in hopes that going to the the boss yeah. would get things moving, but uh, Tim is actually leaving the RRA and and moving to the. Uh, um, he's going to be working for the county health department. Um, but the voicemail still goes to his voicemail when I call the number for the, for the, so I don't know when that is taking place. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wouldn't mind reaching out to Charlie. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. I've talked to him on the phone. <coughs> oh. I, I suspect the answer you may get is that we're lucky to have him because most yes. towns don't have him. 
Yes. And there are leftovers from when the county ran our transfer station. Yes, but, I, uh, I suspect that will be, but I, I'll, I just, I'll ask them about it because um, okay. they don't, they're there. So yeah. I have a bit of a solution or some information. Oh. On this, um, I made a call after I found out that they'd been down for two weeks and it's costing us money because not compacting, of course, makes the poles more and the fuel usage more. And what I found out from the company I spoke to, which is one direction to go, um, if we wanted to use them, it would be $145 an hour. And it would be, I can tell you right now where they're located, it would be a three hour. So you'd start out with 300 and something, almost 400. Um, but if we could get them the name of the compactor, the model, the serial number, and the size that might help them and it might be able to cut down on it or- Is that a, other... a cost for repair, B? Yes, it is. I'm not sure we're allowed to do that only because we don't own the compactors. Well, so, but this is good B because what I, my plan was I would call Charlie tell them what's going on and ask for permission to get it repaired if they're just not gonna come and do it. Okay. And then, then maybe we could follow up with- I what? have I have another solution too, which okay. may be less money. Um, I don't know if they're all hydraulic. I don't know if they're electronic with circuit boards or whatever. Hydraulics, there are people in the area who work on diesel trucks that are mostly hydraulic and the one person's name I came up with, I'm not gonna put out over the airways, but uh, I'd be happy to give it to either one of you. And uh, they do hydraulics. The Very one we believe that, that be the, the motor is way. burned out. Yeah. The motor? That's yeah. what we believe on the one, just from the symptoms. Yeah. Okay. The other That's one I'm not certain of, but the one was, we are does, all pretty confident it's a burned out motor. Does the motor operate by hydraulics and getting oil and constant? I don't know that I answer. Think it is That's hydraulic B, but um, I'll call, I'm going to call, I told Harry I'd call Charlie tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then if Charlie gives me permission for us to have it repaired, I'll, I'll call you, okay? Okay, because there's a particular reason I didn't put any names out there. Oh, yeah, Understood. I totally get that. Yeah. Understood. But thank, thank you for doing that, B. Because of the fact that I live with somebody who did garbage for 40 years, and he's very well aware of the cost factor, not getting it fixed. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, B. And You're I welcome. think that's backed up because our, our bill that I just got for the end of uh, June was the highest bill we've had all year. Now, Correct. admittedly, July or June and July and August are usually our highest months anyway. But right. I suspect it's a little bit higher than usual uh, by about probably a thousand dollars. I was going to say, I was told um, it could be as high as six to one. You I could haven't seen that, but well, but, depending on the size of the compact, yeah, of course, yeah. that was a large compact. Yeah. Okay. It's probably about. Uh, I would say the bill is in the neighborhood of about seven or eight percent higher than than That's usual. That's very very possible. Very possible. Okay, um, Chris, anything on uh, ECC or the park? I did some research there this weekend. I, I think I told everyone I was there a couple of weeks ago for research about birds, but this weekend I was researching water and water quality. So I'm gonna work with the ECC to do some testing. Uh, and I just got an email from Madeline today so I can update you all at the next meeting more. Great, thank you. Adam, anything recreation? Not really, I think. <laughs> Yes, he recreated on his vacation. <laughs> it did. It looked like it was a lot of good recreation. I think Adam's frozen. Uh -oh. frozen oh, he's on frozen. There he is. There we go. He's uh, on the house internet. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, no significant updates. I mean, first off, just to, you know, congratulations to Ashley once again on um, 
uh, doing such a great job on the test. Um, uh, uh, they're working hard on the virtual summer program. Uh, um, again, not a lot to report outside of that right now. Yeah. And I want to say thank you, Aaron, help them set up their YouTube page. Uh, uh, she'll downplay it, but it's, it's, uh, it's big in that somebody else doesn't have to do it. So thank you very much. And uh, Ashley and, and Bethany and Rita are working hard in, in moving that forward. Um, I had a brief call with Rita today. The seniors are indicating they really, we looked into moving exercise classes maybe outside to the pavilion at the park. They would prefer not to do that. Uh, they would rather wait until we can move them inside. So we're gonna give it a few weeks and see, uh, see where things go. Um, I will tell you, uh, Goldie Goldberg uh, has been uh, calling quite a bit and wants to get the line dancing going again. And I am looking into doing that outside. And hopefully within the next two weeks, we will get some line dancing classes going on out there uh, with social distancing. With We will tape out six foot boxes essentially and make sure that people stay in the boxes. <coughs> um, but uh, uh, I want to see how that works. Yeah, I can see somebody doing boot scoot and boogie and staying in a six foot distance. All righty uh, then. She's working with with the, with the Pine Ridge and doing classes with them as she does regularly, and uh, she said it's it's helping her hone her her line dancing skills with dances that can keep people apart. <laughs> so uh, she's working on that. Uh, but she's, she's very enthusiastic lady. and excited. If if you if you talk to Goldie for more than two minutes and don't walk away exhausted, you, you haven't really <laughs> talked to Goldie. So, um, okay. Uh, Jeff is not here. I can give a quick update. Uh, we did Chip Seal on uh, Crum Road. We did Berm Road. Um, Kate, you probably know better than I do. What Sundown. Another? Sundown. What's Sundale. Sundale. Um, today we paved Van Tine. Thank you. And uh, do you know where they paved last Monday? Or was it were both Mondays Van Tine? May have no. been. No. I'm not sure. Yeah. And uh, Jeff is also going to get a price for the amount of material. Uh, we work at Marble Town on our paving. So we don't pay for the paver, we just pay for material. And in return with the shared services, we help Marble Town when they do other work. So it's a good deal. Jeff's gonna get a, a cost to redo the community center parking lot. Since part of that is actually a, a roadway, uh, he's gonna look into the cost of, uh, of paving that, repaving the whole thing. We, we uh, with the, uh, the improvements done for the uh, food pantry, we did have to do certain spots of it, but not we. it was not in the grant to do the whole parking lot, but he's going to get me a, a price for doing that. Uh, he doesn't anticipate it'll be that expensive. Um, let me go back to sharing screen here. Uh, Constabulary report. Uh, have it here today. It was emailed to all of you. <coughs> uh, they answered 13 calls for services and in May of 2020. I'm not sure. I think that's a typo. I think it's meant to say June. Uh, there were 31 neighbor to neighbor quality of life complaints, three resident traffic complaints, two environmental complaints, four building department violations were served. And I just want to clarify uh, the constabulary serves violations on behalf of the code enforcement office. They are not uh, writing the violations, they are not observing the, they may observe and report it. But only the code enforcement officer issues violations and they deliver them on behalf. Uh, there seems to be a miscommunication of some people that uh, they're issuing violations on their own, and that is not true. Um, there are 17 court proceedings which remain open as the courts are still closed. 
Uh, they continue to receive many calls regarding individuals and larger groups trespassing on residents' properties. Uh, they're receiving new and ongoing complaints regarding garbage being dumped on properties in various places around town. Uh, they're getting calls from residents complaining of groups of cars parked adjacent to and in front of their properties. And they're blocking the roads and the vehicle occupants. Uh, they're not uh, adhering to social distancing rules. Uh, some of these locations are Towpath Road, as we talked about earlier, Trails End Road, Mill Hook Road. Uh, there, were, there was contacted regarding a stolen riding mower. Uh, however, after investigation, it was determined the mower was mistakenly picked up by a repair service and was returned. They picked up the wrong lawnmower, apparently. Um, they uh, were receiving a high degree of neighbor to neighbor complaints. I will tell you today, I received a number of fireworks complaints, well, in the past week, uh, primarily. Um, some of these are being launched over neighbors' homes, and then the neighbors have concerns that if they land on their roof, what could happen? Um, they continue the 4455 Minnewaska Park patrols. Saturdays and Sundays. When we have availability, we are not up there every weekend because we sometimes do not have availability of constables. And uh, I will say I have heard from Minnewaska again, and I've heard from the state police. Thank you for us doing that. Um, to reiterate, we are not issuing tickets. We are not uh, confronting people. We are simply pulling in behind people parked illegally, uh, instructing them on the PA system and using the lights on the constable cars to move them. And uh, it is, has been very successful. Uh, I travel the mountain and check up on it many times each day on the weekend. And we are not experiencing anywhere near the volume of traffic and backups and cars parked on the side of the road that we were seeing in April. Um, there, there is still some backup. The parking lot still fills up quickly, but it's, it, the, the program is working. Uh, to date, we have spent a grand total of $6,000 for the year for the constables. And that includes $2,000 for the insurance program for the full year. So <clears throat> we have spent $4,000 on salaries of constables. Also the constable chief through his training of people has brought in over $8,000 of revenue to the town. So when we say they're bringing in revenue, we are not talking about traffic tickets. We are talking about revenue from training operations that uh, the chief is running on behalf of the town. He is a licensed certified trainer. So uh, they have raised more money than we have spent in our constables this year. And I think it's important to say that. Um, and he goes on to say, uh, several town residents have stopped to thank uh, the, the constables on their 4455 uh, times. And I will tell you, I've received a number of texts, emails, and phone calls also saying the same thing. So um, town court report, Kate, do you have anything? No. Okay. <laughs> we'll move directly into resolutions. Uh, so recommended resolution is adopt local law number three of 2020 amending chapter 132 vehicle and traffic of the code of town of Rochester and request the town clerk file the local law with the Department of State. Do I have that resolution? I'll make that resolution. Do I have a second? I'll second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, roll call vote. Councilman and Allen. Aye. Councilman Hagen Depew? Aye. Councilman Hewitt? Aye. Councilman Paddock? Aye. Supervisor Baden? Aye. Uh, next is action on the minutes. Uh, the town board accepts the minutes of the June 4th, 2020 regular meeting, the June 17th, 2020 special meeting, and, and that meeting is as amended. Kate sent out an amended version, and the June 25th, 2020 workshop meeting. Do I have that resolution? I'll make the uh, resolution. A second. 
I'll, I'll second. second. Okay. A roll call vote, please, Kate. Councilwoman and Allen. Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew. Aye. Councilman Hewitt. Okay. Councilman Paddock. Aye. Supervisor Baden. Aye. Uh, next is a municipal acceptance. Uh, I want to thank Kate for writing this resolution. So it says, whereas after review by the town attorney, resolution 83, 2015, adopted July 2nd, 2015, the town of Rochester town board entered into contract with the municipality for no setup fees, monthly fees, or processing fees assessed to the municipality. Whereas municipal is an electronic payment processing solution designed specifically for the government education and utility industries. Whereas municipal allows municipalities to pass a fee along to the individual choosing to pay via credit card or with an electronic check online. Whereas municipal offers an online payment portal that lets them make payments to any town department by credit card or ACH from their checking account. Whereas all payments, whether accepted over the counter via phone by mail or online are captured in one comprehensive reporting system. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whereas town clerk Gunberg met with various departments that would utilize this payment option. Whereas municipal would generate a link to be placed on the town website. Therefore, the town of Rochester town board hereby authorizes the town clerk to work with municipal on mitigating, I'm sorry, migrating accounts to a link to be placed on the town of Rochester website. Um, I'll go ahead and make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Uh, any questions or discussion? And I'll let Kate answer because she's the expert on this. Kate, does this, can this system be part of the court as well? Um, the court takes in their own payments and you can pay online with the court through a New York court system. So I don't think that they would be able to be on the same program as this. Okay. Um, if this no would include questions? building department, planning department, recreation. Um, we take in constabulary fees, all town clerk fees, DEC, tax payments. All those could now be made online. Thank you. I think it's excellent. Yes, everyone was pretty excited about it. Um, the only concern I got from Becky um, I almost said Bri uh, Brenda, Brianna and Ashley mm. is, uh, there are concerns. Ashley doesn't want people to go online and automatically make a payment and automatically assume that they have a spot in summer program or on the basketball program. And same thing with Brianna. She doesn't want someone to pay for an application for planning when they haven't gone through code enforcement yet. So we've made it very clear that when the person has the ability to pay it, we can tell them you have an option to pay online that they just can't go online and make a payment and assume. And that we could have a link with this online payment link stating that specifically, make sure that you have clearance from the department prior to making a payment. Kate, if somebody made a payment ahead of time, could we reject it and, re and void yes, the payment? Yes, you can. Okay, that, that just, it, it's just an option to know that we could do that. Yes, had to. yes. Okay. Kate, how did this come to be in two, are these, I want to just double check that the dates are correct. I'm not being facetious. Do, the resolution was done in 2015. How is it we're just coming to fruition with this now? Um, in 2015, we decided to go with online, um, I'm sorry, credit card payments. And we had the option of online at the time. We just didn't pursue that option further. And uh, back in May, I watched the town of Marbletown town board meeting and they actually had a lady on there giving direction on how the municipal online payment portal would work. So then I inquired about it and it's a very easy to migrate the information. They're actually in the process of doing it to give us a link. And from there, we would just take that link and place it on the website. So they told me it'd be approximately two weeks. We already take take payments in person by credit card B. That's mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. I know that. That's what happened starting in 2015. Right. Okay. We've never gone to the online portal. It was talked about. It, we want, I guess back, I remember back in 2015, it was discussed, let's try it and see where it goes. And then it just never was brought back up again. So uh, thank you, Kate, for bringing this back up. And yeah. I'm, I'm surprised the number of people who are, who are willing to pay a fee 
for the credit card that utilize credit cards. Uh, Kate told me she gets a significant amount of tax payments that way. Yep. And uh, it's a convenience factor for many people. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, roll call vote, please, Kate. Councilman Anawan? Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew? Aye. Councilman Hewitt? Aye. Councilman Paddock? Aye. Supervisor Baden? Aye. Okay, um, budget modifications. I put that in as a standard resolution. However, after I went through everything, there are no modifications to make this month. So uh, we will uh, move past that resolution. Um, next, this is our bond anticipation note uh, 2020 renewal. I am not going to read you the whole resolution. Uh, what you are doing is you are giving me uh, authority. This is the bond that was taken out June 7, 2018 for highway <coughs> purposes. Um, we are renewing uh, the bond, which is renewable for a period of five years. Uh, this will be the second renewal. So this will be starting the third year of that bond. We are paying $70,000 toward this bond at, <coughs> at payment plus the interest, uh, which uh, we budgeted for. So uh, with that being said, I'll make this resolution. Uh, does anybody second it, please? I'll second it, Mike. Okay, any questions or discussion? I just wanted to say I like the idea that you put the, the renewal as a, uh, with a number, the CR1, I like that. Oh. So it, it, it differentiates it. Yep, yeah, we have, we have two bonds that we are in the process of. Uh, we'll have another one coming up probably, I believe in September or October is when it comes due. Uh, that one will be renewing uh, for the third time. So it will be starting the fourth year. And both of these were for the two years that the CHIPS funding was budgeted, the revenue was budgeted, but the expenditure side was not budgeted. And you can't get the CHIPS money unless you spend it. So we had to borrow the money to get the CHIPS money and what we're doing is we're rolling it over. That's why we're so aggressively paying off uh, $70,000 of each, each bond each year for a total of $140,000. It's because we're continually rolling over the CHIPS money from the previous year to pay the bond for the next year. Um, if there's no, for, and this is authorizing me to uh, sign that, that bond, which comes due July 16th. Um, so roll call vote, please, Kate. Councilman and Allen? Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew? Aye. Councilman Hewitt? Aye. Councilman Paddock? Aye. Supervisor Baden? Aye. And just to clarify too, this is the only debt that the town has currently are these two bonds. Um, next is awarding our abrasive sand bid. Mike, are they bonds or bands? I'm sorry, they are bands. But it's a it's a bond anticipation note. Correct. What it's called. Yes. Which is why I said bond. But yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. It is a bond resolution. Um, but they're yeah they're bands and you you have you have five years from the time you take it out you must pay it off within the five years. And we will do that with both of these with no problem. Um, so moving forward, abrasive sand bid. Uh, Upon recommendation of the town supervisor and highway superintendent, the town accepts the bid and I'm going to insert the name of Frank Courtright Excavating Incorporated for abrasive screenings guaranteed valid for a period of one year from July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2021. Uh, do I have that motion? I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. For comparison, I emailed you um, the county bid which is a little bit cheaper. However, uh, the county bid is from uh, one that is on Route 209 in, uh, it is from uh, 209 sand and gravel. It is for 650 per ton. However, uh, that vein of sand does not meet our specs for the passing through. And we would run into potentially the same problem we had two years ago with it being too fine a sand and not and clogging up in the spreaders. <clears throat> um, 
it also obviously is more transportation to go there than to uh, Frank Courtwright's in our town. Uh, he was the only bid we received. Uh, and uh, there is his bid, 7.30 a ton. Uh, it is slightly higher than where we are right now with him, but not, uh, not considerably higher. I think it's about a 4% or 5% increase from where he is right now. Um, so are there any dis further discussion? If we're not, just, we're, are we, we're utilizing the best practices in some form, yes? We don't have to in this case, because we put it out for bid. This was the only bid. Uh, right. we, in comparing it to the county, we find that the county uh, does not uh, meet our specs right. for what uh, we want for, uh, for the percentage passing through uh, the screen. They say they say twenty five percent, and I can't remember what we asked for. I don't have the bid right in front of me, but it was it was a, a different percentage. So, no, I just want to clarify. I just wanted to clarify yeah, but why this is we, not this is not yeah. a best value bid. This is right. just we're accepting the bid that was uh, presented as, as the only bid. But I was bringing the county into the conversation because yes. we could choose to go with the county yes. bid, uh, but it doesn't meet our specs. Yes, thank you. Sure. Uh, roll call vote, please, Kate. Councilman Anawan. Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew. Aye. Councilman Hewitt. Aye. Councilman Paddock. Aye. Supervisor Baden. Aye. Uh, next, this was you received a letter from Mr. Davis. Uh, so, upon recommendation of the code enforcement officer, the town board authorizes the supervisor to extend offer of employment to. William Farrell Jr. for the position of fire inspector part-time, effective July 12, 2020, <clears throat> not to exceed an average of 15 hours per week work for the remaining 25 weeks of 2020 to be compensated at a rate of $19 per hour. <clears throat> Excuse me. The position shall be managed by the code enforcement officer as to exact hours and duties assigned. Uh, I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. Thank Any you. discussion or questions? Um, we put it out on Indeed. We received approximately 12, I believe, to 15 uh, responses uh, that were viable. There were a number from other states. Uh, we did not pursue them. Uh, Mr. Davis reviewed all the resumes, decided he uh, did not feel the need to have uh, in-person interviews, especially in light of the COVID. Um, I will say Mr. Farrell comes very well trained. Uh, he is a paid firefighter in the city of Kingston. He has extensive military firefighting training. He has a half a page of certifications uh, on his resume. And uh, I would concur with, with Mr. Davis's recommendation. Uh, so. And I did negotiate that. I did speak with him. He is interested in the job and he is accepting of that, uh, that uh, rate of pay. So uh, any other questions? If not, Kate, roll call vote. Councilwoman Anawan. Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew. Aye. Councilman Hewitt. Aye. Councilman Paddock. Aye. Supervisor Baden. Aye. Okay, uh, I will notify Shirley and Jerry and uh, get the paperwork moving so we can get him uh, started next week. Uh, next is a recommended re resolution for a request to the Ulster County Personnel Department. Upon recommendation of the town supervisor, the town board authorizes the supervisor to send a letter to the Ulster County Personnel Department requesting it to furnish the town with the names of persons on an appropriate eligible list established by the department which is requested by the town of Rochester to be limited to town of Rochester residents for the Fe February 21st, 2019 classified position zoning coordinator full-time in accordance with New York state consolidated laws, civil service 23, uh, subsection 23-4 services by state department of civil service certification of state and municipal eligible lists. Uh, I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll make the second. Okay. 
uh, for discussion purposes, this is the zoning coordinator position that we have created as uh, Mr. Davis's full-time assistant last year. Uh, it is a provisional position. Uh, currently, it is uh, scheduled for a test that was supposed to take place in early June. It was canceled due to the COVID, has not been rescheduled. But under the civil service law, we can request that the three top scores furnished to us be Rochester residents or any boundary we wish to set. If we do not find a person in those three top three Rochester residents, then we can ask for a different list, but we have the ability to ask for it to be limited first to Rochester residents. So that's the reason for the motion. I have a question. Yes. Why did this take a year to come forward to go before the board? And secondly, why couldn't Becky just have kept the title that was non-civil service? She's been doing the job for like 20 years. No, she hasn't. She's only filled in there since Brenda passed away. Well, since Brenda passed away, right, right but she's been involved in that department. What, what happened, Brenda's position was civil service. Okay. And when Becky was moved into that position, the former town board chose to list it as zoning board of appeals secretary. That's correct. That is not the proper position for, she's not doing the zoning board of appeals secretary job. Um, <clears throat> I felt strongly about getting that corrected because she had no protection. Uh, if she were just listed as a clerk as Brenda was, it would require a civil service test, which would open it up to any person who took a clerk test. Mike Richardson and the board worked back last year in 2019 to create this zoning coordinator position. It was accepted by the, uh, both the county and the state. Um, the test was, uh, we knew the test would be coming someday. We just didn't know when. Why this is coming to the board now is because the test was scheduled for June. Um, I should have brought this to you last month. I neglected to put it on the agenda last month out of, out of an oversight on my part. So I put this on because the test is now scheduled or will be rescheduled sometime soon. So this way we are asking for the top three scores of Rochester residents. That's, that's the, the short answer. <laughs> so, um, any other questions? Okay, uh, Kate, I'd ask for a roll call vote. Councilman Anawan. Aye. Councilwoman Hagen DePew. Aye. Councilman Paddock. I'm choosing to recuse myself. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Councilman Kewitt. Oh, aye. Councilman Paddock. And again, I'll choosing. Uh, please. Okay. And Supervisor Baden. Aye. Okay. I will send that letter to them uh, requesting that when they furnish the list to us, that it be. Uh, first priority is the top three Rochester residents. Um, <clears throat> next is uh, a request to create an employment position. This is upon recommendation of the town supervisor. The town board authorized the supervisor to send a new position duty statement to the Ulster County Personnel Department re requesting creation of a temporary clerk part-time for the period of August 17th, 2020 through September 19, 2020, not to exceed 25 hours work per week. The person, the position to be managed by the town supervisor as to exact hours and duties assigned and the employee will work in the supervisor's office for training purposes. I'm gonna make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Questions or discussion? What this position is for, uh, as many of you know, and it has not been announced publicly, but will be very soon, I imagine. Uh, Shirley Lamont is retiring in September. Uh, September 18th, to be exact, will be her last day of work. Um, <clears throat> this will allow a person to get in here and train with her for a period of time. Um, what I'm looking for is we would need to create this new position because we do not have a part-time clerk in the supervisor's office. Uh, let me admit B, she got kicked out. <laughs> um, is she back in? Good 
We're having a terrible, here. terrible storm here. Aaron, no it should be by you. Yeah, I, I keep here. muting myself because of the yeah. thunder. Yeah, yeah, here too. Yeah. Okay, so B, I don't know if you heard what I was saying. So this resolution is uh, to uh, Shirley is retiring in September 18th. Um, this resolution will allow her replacement to come in for up to five weeks to train. The reason I started it August 17th is that way the person would be able to do a, a August billing cycle with her. I didn't want to do it on the 24th because then the bills would be due three, four days later. Right. So this way, she, the person, whoever that may be, <clears throat> would be filling in for, uh, I'm not filling in, but we would be training with her for that period of time. Uh, Shirley does four jobs in this town. She is, does all the payroll and all the human resources, including monitoring vacation, sick pay, retirement funds. Uh, she is the confidential assistant to the supervisor. She is the town bookkeeper who tracks all the financial records of the town uh, with the exception of the court. And she is the uh, purchasing agent for the town and makes every purchase that is not highway related uh, she makes. So She's the town uh, goddess. What's that? She's the town goddess. Exactly. Yes, she is. Uh, she's been here approximately 20 years and uh, she will be very hard to replace. So uh, that is the reason I'm not setting a rate of pay because I want to see what the resumes come in as and, and go from there for this training period. Um, Mike. That being said, <clears throat> anybody have any questions? Mike, yeah, you we'll... may want to, I'm sorry. Go ahead, you may want to make this an account clerk. She's handling money, doing billing. Um, well, they, they're not going to be. They're going to be learning under Shirley. So this was Mike Richardson's suggestion is to just do it as a temporary clerk. Um, I'm going to review resumes. Obviously, the, the, the full-time position is the supervisor appointment. Um, so I'm going to be reviewing resumes and and you know, recommending the hiring, obviously the hiring of the person that I choose to take the job full-time is going to be the person for this. Uh, that's why we're doing it as a part-time position. If it were to be a, in a temporary position, if it were full-time and not temporary, then we would have to go through the civil service list. So because it's an appointed position by you, does it have to be civil service? Um, yes, every, every job is civil service. You, 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 uh, you get confused on that. Every job is civil service. It's a non-competitive position in civil service, but it is still a civil service position. Okay. And civil if service it... just means it adheres to the civil service laws, which states that it is a non-competitive position. But we still have the, the training period has to be uh, that position because I'm only allowed one person to be either the bookkeeper or the secretary, confidential secretary, or both. Correct. So while Shirley is still working, a person can't be training unless that position is approved by the personnel department. Where does this say non-competitive? It doesn't. It's it's by being a we have to ask the personnel department for for their determination, but because it is a temporary position under 25 hours, it meets the criteria for a non-competitive position. All right, That's so why I'm writing this letter asking them to classify the position and allow us to hire somebody. So in this position, this person would never take a test. Correct. Thank you. Correct. I'm wondering. And, and, uh, and my obviously my goal is to recommend to the town board at the August meeting, the person to hire to fill this temporary clerk position, who then starting September 19th or 20th, whatever the date may be, I would appoint as uh, to take over that job. Then it would be an appointment, correct? Correct. Thank but the, the, well, the learning period can't be an appointment. That right. has to be a resolution okay. by the board. Okay. Okay. So this is step one, which is asking the, the personnel department to create the position. Gotcha. And can you write in the um, application that it has the potential to become full-time so you get a better- tool? Exactly. I, I, I'm going to say that it, it will, in. I'm actually going to advertise it as a permanent full-time position, 
with a training period of five weeks. Nice. That's great. That's how I'm going to advertise it. Mm -hmm. um, and based on our experience with Indeed, which was has been hugely successful, I'm going to do it that way again. Uh, we got great response for the highway secretary. We got great response for the uh, um, the uh, assessor's aide when we needed one. <clears throat> so that's my plan. I found that newspaper ads are not, there's no return for it anymore. And indeed it's free to do the ad for one month. And that's all we need to do is a, a put it out there for one month. You really believe that a person going to take over four different job sets can train in five weeks. I do, and that was that was with Shirley's. Uh, that time frame was picked with Shirley's guidance. I was going to bring up something similar. Be in the future, we might need um, a budget for an additional helper if this person can't handle all that. Correct, it, it and and we will, once once we establish the rate of pay for this person, we will have to do a budget modification because there is nothing in the budget for this. However, uh, 25 hours a week at, you know, at most it's going to be $18 an hour, $17 an hour. Uh, it's, it's not going to be a considerable, I mean, we're talking $2,000 probably, $2,500. So it's not a huge, huge amount. Of I don't think that's enough time. You're not giving this person enough time to learn four jobs. Well, I'm going by Shirley's guidance and, and, and I think it is, B. I think it is. You honestly believe that this person's going to understand, firstly, your bookkeeping program, secondly, the municipal accounting discipline, thirdly, the ordering, what everybody needs, fourthly, how to do payroll. Hopefully they've done that before so that at least they We're going to be hiring how... somebody who has experience. I'm not going to hire somebody just off the street who doesn't know anything about any of this already. No, no, no. I'm not saying that, but right. you and I both know that municipality stuff is different than outside stuff. Agreed. Agreed. And, uh, and my goal is going to be to find somebody who has municipal background. Is, um, um, is that date when Shirley is leaving? Shirley is leaving September 18th is her last day of work. Yeah. I mean, Originally I had planned, Shirley and I had talked about one month overlap. I moved it to five weeks with the intention that they would get a, a, a full, you know, a two week lead up to the to the August bills so they could see how that's all done because she starts doing 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 the monthly bills about mid month. Um, I will be saying big prayers for whoever this person is. <laughs> I know. Bear in mind be most of most of the people we have hired don't get any training at all. This is this is a first I've asked around nobody has ever gotten a, a, an overlap training like this before. And I also realize it's the biggest position. It certainly camp. is. It, 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 I've been here. I've done this. Maybe I did a touch of payroll, a little bit of water and sewer, mostly accounts payable, accounts receivable, checkbooks. I mean, it took me six years to work up to where I was to learn everything. And you want this person to learn four different jobs in, in five weeks. I, I think you're really... I, I think, wish, you, I, I think you have a candidate here, Mike. B sounds like a good candidate. <laughs> be a candidate. I've been there, done that, didn't get the t-shirt and got slapped at the same time. Thank you so well, much. To, to, to start with, the, the confidential secretary position means answering the phone. And, that does, and, yes. Yes. The, the purchasing means ordering, going online and ordering, uh, you know, and, and, Maybe for a little while, we'll have to ask department heads to do a little research on their own. Uh, yes, I don't think. deny there's going to be, there's going to be a, a change, there's, but there's definitely going to be a change. But I also, you know, I, I don't want to have- You have a to, cheat sheet for her with all the budget stuff on it to give her the code so she at least knows where to plunk it in the computer? Yes, yes, <laughs> me, I do. <laughs> there's a lot of backup oh, information here, my trust me. God. Trust me, there's a lot of backup information here, so. Well, also, I it is, um, it's already July 6th. Right. So I I don't know that we would be able to really get, I mean, I don't know that we'd be able to extend this much just in. No, I understand, I understand. I get that. Aaron, I'm telling you. 
Yeah. Even though Rochester's smaller. Remember, remember and, though, guys, I, and I don't mean to fall back on this, that this is my appointment. So it's it not is. Be I don't the care who you're doing put a lot in of interviews. I'm, and, just, I'm just saying, Mike, that the timeline you have seems achievable. But if we were to extend it, it might be hard to give right. you the opportunity to find. Oh, OK. I understand now what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And Mike, you could put anybody in here, but you better find somebody that was that was art really good and already in municipal. I'm gonna find, and that's my hope. That's my hope. And and just based on the resumes that we got back, I mean, when we got back the highway secretary. Oh, I know. I interviewed, I interviewed ten people because there were ten very well qualified people, and so you know that is, uh, I, and and this job will pay benefits. This job will pay a, a decent uh, wage. This job will have sick time, vacation time. It's, a very, it's gonna be a lucrative job. I, I honestly don't think we're gonna, gonna have trouble finding people, especially- I just, I just hope it will be sensible in setting pay based on how many years Shirley had in as well, you know? Agreed, agreed. The board will set the pay, not me, but uh, when we get to that, I, I, I figured let's not put the cart before the horse. I'm going to advertise a range of pay right now. And then to, based on who the candidate is and their experience, we will set the rate of pay in comparison to the rest of our, our staff. We, we can't blow it out of the water and, and be way above or way below what somebody else is making within our staff. Well, good luck with the process, Mike. Let us know if you need any help. Amen. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Right now, I just need a, a, a roll call vote on this resolution. To yeah, I know. It. So, Kate? C Councilman Anawan? Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew? Aye, with lots of prayers for whoever it is. Councilman, uh, Councilman Hewitt? Aye. Councilman Paddock? Oh, you're muted. He's muted. And I again. <laughs> Supervisor Baden. Aye. Uh, next, this is the tobacco free zone. I, I sent to you the resolution from 2010. Uh, after our discussion, I'm asking that we remove uh, the section that says, therefore, from this day forward, the town park located, and we replace it this day forward, the town park located at Scenic Road, Accord, New York and the Harold Lipton Community Center located at 15 Tobacco Road, ironically enough. Accord, New York are duly designated as tobacco free zones and appropriate signage will be posted designating the tobacco free zones. I'll make the motion. Uh, second? I'll second. Any questions or discussion? So given the feedback about the transfer station and the town hall and all the other places, I left those off just doing the two places where there are kids. Um, if there's no other questions, and I, I will order the appropriate signage uh, from that company who's offering it to us for free. <laughs> there's just a very slight typo. Which is? Uh, the town of Rochester is just a little misspelled. Oh, I copied that from the original resolution because it was misspelled in the original resolution. I'm correcting it in the replacement. Great. Yeah, I that was a cut and paste directly from the resolution. So, oh, I see that now. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to. Uh, I didn't want to change the spelling of something that was misspelled previously, just because I wanted to be specific of what we were replacing. I got it. Sorry, yeah. I just saw that. No, that's okay. Cover. Yeah, he and, thought you and, had and, to and, take a job with Spectrum News. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. A roll call vote, please. Councilman Allen. Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew? Aye. Councilman Hewitt? Aye. Councilman Paddock? Aye. Supervisor Baden? Aye. Okay, moving on to discussion. Uh, the first, you now all have gotten your 12 responses for the IT consultant. Uh, everybody got them either Thursday or Friday of last week. Yes. What I would like is to ask you to, to do the scoring of those by next Monday the 13th, does that seem feasible to everybody? Then what I would like to do is schedule a special meeting later on that week. And if we can pick that date tonight, that would be great. Okay, I um, have a question. I yep. went through those bid packets. Yep. Several of them are missing workers comp, 
and a couple are missing non-collusion. If okay. they're missing a non-collusion, they should be disqualified. Correct. I, when, in right. that case, I just lowered the quality and comprehensiveness of the proposal. I, I will say, B, any that you notice are missing the non-collusion, it should be noted. You can. I have. Um, I believe we should score them anyway, and then we will dis. If if they win, we will disqualify them because they don't meet the criteria. The the workers' comp they only have to provide that to us if they are the successful. Uh, bidder. Okay. Um, they we said that they have to have it, but we did not say they have to supply it to us in the bid. If they don't have it, uh, then they would be disqualified, and we would move to the next next but, highest. And, but Mike, yeah. I think B is correct. If there's if they don't have their non collusion in there, why why grade them? They're disqualified. Okay, okay. Throw them out. Um, I think, and I admit, I have not looked through the, all the packets yet. I think maybe I what did. we should do is, how about each of us? Uh, to look through, see which ones we believe ha don't have the, the non-collusion, or we could ask Kate to review them all and tell us which ones would be disqualified. I'm, I, I don't want to put extra work on Kate, but which way do you feel? Uh, and I agree, they, they, if they don't have the non-collusion, they didn't meet this, the specs because it's required by law. Hey, do you remember which one? Because I, I don't remember seeing oh, without sure. non-collusion. Oh, oh yeah. That? Hey, Mike, more than one. Yeah, there's a couple of them that are Rats. missing there, but there's also uh, a couple of very good viable candidates. Is that something that we could send out and just say, hey, can you guys sign this piece of paper so we no. can? No, 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 no. It was then required. Let's get them out of there so we don't have to do extra work. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's um, right. I think it's pretty, I mean, I'm, I, I feel like it's pretty obvious the ones that have it and that don't. So I'm fine. Right. Now, now, admittedly, they can have their own alternative form. They don't have to have the form that Kate provided. There's no form. Okay. That's or, the first thing could, I look for. Or, or B, they could state it in, in, in within their documentation too. So that's why I want to be clear that we're you not, state you, know, you state in your RFP that you want the non-collusion form. You don't state that they can put it in their RFP. You've asked specifically for the form, and anyone that doesn't have a non-collusion is not qualified. Am I wrong, Mary Lou? I agree with you, Bane. Right. I just don't remember if we said they, I said, I think it said a non collusion statement. I don't think it said form. Kate attached the form, but I don't think, Kate, maybe you can weigh in on this because I don't remember. I don't either. Yeah. I would have to go back and look because if we say a non collusion statement, including, would you say, Mary Lou, that is legitimate if we said use the word statement? If they, if you said a statement and they have a statement, yeah. so just go back and look at the go back and the look. specs. And if it yeah. says form and they don't have a form, they're disqualified. Yep, I, I will be unavailable tomorrow because I have a family obligation, but I, I could look through them all on Wednesday and try to determine which ones to not review. Or well, you can, it's kind of yeah. obvious if you read through and you see what a non-collusion statement looks like yeah. and you see it's not in <laughs> right. that packet, then right. you have I just, to read I just, it. I just want to make sure we all agree which ones those are that we're not reviewing. That's all mm -hmm. I'm trying. If you want to do it on your own, that's fine. And if at the end of the day we disagree on it, then we can go from there. Hey, Mike, I'm okay you, with that. Can you help us by giving us the input from references, contacts, rating that you come up with so that we're not all yeah we're references. all at zero we don't know at least i'm at zero yeah, sorry, i don't know the question chris uh, i just put a question mark in the box for for reference contacts except for the ones that provided letters i was able to read the references but right. I think only one provided letters so i'd go with your recommendation on the the rating of their reference okay would you would you like me to make calls then i when we added that criteria, I didn't know if each board member wanted to make their own phone calls or if that we would to go be... with... Why would you do that to a company? I mean, why would you call <laughs> nine have nine people call? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I'm just I'm just saying it was it was asked. Remember we made an amendment to include that specific uh, point structure for references. And it was not in the original and then we changed it or we changed the point value on it. So I, I didn't know how you wanted to do it. This is our okay. first time doing the best value. I'm happy yeah. to make the phone calls to all the references and, and create a, a report of some kind. 
if that's what you'd like. Response requirements read this way. An affidavit of non-collusion is attached and forms a part of this proposal. Failure to sign this statement will constitute grounds for rejection of the proposal. Okay, there we go. Thank you. You just clarified for us. And so I'd we say do, don't, don't do references until we eliminate certain ones. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I agree, Chris. So then if that's the case, will you all email me which ones you think should be removed and I will verify it. And then we can all agree on Wednesday, which ones are removed. I can and tell you I, in five minutes, I'm halfway through the pile already. Okay. Perfect. I believe there were several. Mm. There are. Yep. Yeah, there and are. If they don't have it, then they didn't meet the qualifications and we can tell them why they were rejected because they don't didn't meet the I've qualifications. I've got two right off the top. I don't okay. know if you want to put them in this meeting. I don't want to say it by name. That's exact. No. Yeah, no. all right. I'm just asking that you email me and sure. tell me which ones that you think. And if we're all in agreement on, on the emails, then I'll just email back. These are the ones that are rejected for non for not having the, the form. Okay. Um, so going back to the time frame, does does the thirteenth seem viable that you can have them all done by the end of the weekend? Yes. And then, do you want to schedule a meeting for later on that week now, or do you want me to just set a date? Put it this way: Is there any Anybody who can't, Thursday is not possible because it's a ZBA meeting that night, but um, we could do uh, Wednesday, the 15th. I think. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I think that's fine just, for me too. Yeah, Wednesday the 15th is okay for me. Uh, six o'clock. What time? Six o'clock, does that work for everybody or do you want to do it earlier? To be about the what? ITs, the IT proposals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to do it earlier in the day? I'm fine with that. Tell me the time again, Mike. I was suggesting six, but I mean we can do it whenever people would like to do it. Kate, you have to feed family. What's good? <laughs> Seriously, doesn't matter to me. Good for well. Me. Sounds like your call, Mike. Aaron, Aaron, uh, Aaron's in the field. I know she has daytime obligations. So is evening better for you? Um, I can, it, what's better for me is like earlier in the day or later in the day. So like a 4 PM is very challenging for me, but I could do earlier than that. Or what about six, later. let's do 6 PM then. Okay. We'll set the meeting for 6 PM on, on the, so I'd ask for a motion that we establish a special meeting July 16th. Uh, or 15th, excuse me, 15th at 6 p.m. and ask the town clerk to uh, post notice. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Uh, and I'll set up a Zoom meeting and get Kate the uh, the info for it. So um, unless it turns out that you have to have a regular meeting. Oh yeah. Well, we'll know that tomorrow. I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all in favor? Roll call vote. Councilman Anawan? Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew? Aye. Councilman Hewitt? Aye. Councilman Paddock? Aye. Supervisor Baden? Aye. Okay. Uh, in the interest of time, because I would like to try to keep our meeting to two hours as much as possible, I'm going to move the constabulary up to the next item on the agenda. Um, so, Aaron, uh, you have worked on this resolution with Mary Lou, and I'm going to hand the floor over to you. Sure. Um, so I, I incorporated um, everyone's uh, comments at our workshop meeting into a new draft. Um, B, thank you for all your feedback. I, I think I um, have got all and I could just make the motion and we could do a discussion if that's what yep. the board wants. I will say, Aaron, this is the smallest font I think I've ever seen. <laughs> the what? The font of the printout is oh, yeah, I'm small. I'm sorry. It's um, it's because I accidentally saved one of the notes and got it. I could email. <laughs> I can do a screen share. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, do you want to read through the whole thing? How do you want to handle this? What's the board feel like? You have it in front of you. I have mine in front of me too. I don't know if everyone else does. Can you read it, Aaron? 
I think in, I think, fair on there. Yeah, I think we should maybe read through sure. section by section and then just stop for comments at each section. Right? How's that? Okay. So not just as a discussion, not as a motion. Well, let's read through it as a discussion right now. See if there's any. Okay. Yeah, let's let's go through, since it's brand new to people. Let's is that okay with you? I sure. mean, we can always if we don't have discussion or we make any changes in and as we go, then we can make that the resolution. Okay. Um, so whereas the town of Rochester town board started the process of reviewing the town of Rochester police constable department in 2019 by requesting an assessment of the department by law enforcement consultant, Peter Volkman. I don't think there's any issues there. No. <laughs> um, whereas the town board received the report with recommendations on March 2nd, 2020, which calls for the town board to review and clarify the duties of the constables through a new resolution, create a policy and procedure manual that is in sync with the sanctioned duties, and calls for the board to, quote, demonstrate transparency to the community pertaining to the constable service. Somehow we have to take out because of the procedure thing. Procedures are set by the state. Policy is set by the town. Well, except our manual is called the policy yeah. and procedure. I know. Manual. I think that's the first thing we almost have to do then is do some kind of revision of that. No? Well, I think that could be included. I think that's exact. I think that's what Peter. I'm sure that's what Mr. Yeah, I think, that's I, think, in I think in this case, it's small p in both cases, small p policy, small p procedure. Yeah, we're not labeling I mean, the it procedure as manual uh, could be we could all agree that it is the state manual, but we still have to agree on that. So um, I'm OK with the way it's worded. All right. I don't have a problem with the wording. I just wondered how we wanted to proceed with the two of them, which is where we got. Well, well they, we can leave what committee. we're going to do, not how we're going to do it. Okay. Okay. It's a small P. It's not capitalized. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, whereas the town board is invested in revising the constabulary to meet the needs of the community in the town. We haven't really yet. We want to. Yeah. That's what we're saying. Um, my only my only issue, Aaron, is in the word revising. Um, we may yeah. come out of it that you know uh, I think it sort of pre pre sets where we're headed. Would it be better to say the town board is invested in the constabulary meeting the needs of the community in the town? Sure. Instead of, yes. instead of assuming it's going to be revision, that's my only concern. I mean, I I I believe we will have revision. But I think the other statement says it just as clearly. Okay. And there's no predetermination. That yep, I'm fine with that. I just made that. Can I just say something? Yeah. Quick. You were talking about the um, policy and procedure manual. The wording that they recommended was changing it to department guidelines. Oh. So that change in the resolution. Okay, thank you. I knew there was a change, but I couldn't remember could, what could it was. Could we back up and say policy, change policy and procedure to department guidelines? Department create, guidelines. Create department gu guidelines that are in sync with the sanctions. That's what Pete Boltman recommended, right, Kate? Yes. Yeah, thank it you. It says it recommends the policy and procedures be renamed department guidelines. I like that. Okay. I knew there was a discussion, Kate, and I couldn't remember what it was. If that's the case, I think they should both be capitalized because that's the recommendation out of that, Mr. Volkman. Capital D for department and G for guidelines. Correct. Yeah. So it would read, um, create department guidelines capitalized that are in sync with the sanctioned duties. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you could leave the word manual in there, but it may, you know what, just say department guidelines. Take out the word manual as well. Yeah. Cool. It says the same thing. Okay, and so then jumping back down, whereas the town of Rochester constabulary procedure and policy manual opens with a mission statement that begins the Town of Rochester Constabulary is a value-based organization whose mission is to work in partnership with the community to provide a safe, secure, 
and orderly environment by being responsive to the needs of those we serve. The mission statement goes on to state that we are committed to working toward improving the quality of life for our families and our community. We take pride in our ability to work with all segments of the community. Problem solving and our open communication policy with the public remain a major component of our service commitment. I think that's just a, re a statement of of their of their mission statement. Yep. Yeah. Any issue with that? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, whereas the town board recognizes that though it may not apply, our town constabulary review process should match the spirit of the process outlined by Executive Order 203 issued by Governor Andrew Cuomo on June 12th, 2020. Now, therefore, the Town of Rochester Town Board shall perform a comprehensive review of current constabulary deployments, strategies, policies, procedures, and practices, and develop a plan to improve such deployments, strategies, policies, procedures, and practices for the purposes of addressing the particular needs of the Town of Rochester served by our constabulary and promote community engagement to foster trust, fairness, and legitimacy, and to address any racial bias and or disproportionate treatment of communities of color, and to improve constable and community relationship based on trust, fairness, accountability, and transparency. And that, we, I worked with Mary Lou on that wording, where we took some of the executive order and we shaped it by inserting yeah constabulary instead of police force and right. making it more I, could we change one the fifth line where the word plan is develop just say there change plan to develop department guidelines okay to improve such deployments because that way we stay consistent sure that would be my only comment otherwise i think it's a very very uh know a strongly worded and, and and powerful statement i don't think we've ever had and i'm not saying i'm so naive as to think this doesn't happen uh to address any racial bias or just i i don't think that's ever happened here so but why, i don't think it says we're saying it ever happened i think but we're saying, saying we policies in place to make sure it never does happen never does happen yeah okay it's okay it's, yeah okay Exactly. So I'm sorry, Mike. I uh, so fifth line down. Can you fifth just line down? You take, take out the word. It's instead of saying and develop a plan, say and develop department guidelines. So just remove a plan and change it to department okay, guidelines. It. If that while we're in only... here, I I just I always keep saying this, and and I know it's kind of redundant, but um, all this that we're saying, we're reiterating what they already do. Correct. We're clear about that. I mean, they've they've done all this through their mission statement all along. So we're restating. Is that the plan? To restate that this is what they've always done. This uh, is the way they've always acted. You're talking about the the last the last pat, you know, what we just read over. Well, what we're saying is that we um, I mean the board started a process of review before that you know the no 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 i'm not talking about that what i'm saying is through their through their mission statement above in the paragraph above you're kind of reiterating that we are following the governor's order is that where you're going and we're just restating it's saying that we're these things in the last portion she read are the things that the governor wants us all all the municipalities to look at. And of course we don't have to because we're not a police agency. Um, so we've taken those things, but tailored it to our town. So that's it takes out I, police force yeah. and things like that. Yes. Yeah. So we're saying okay. in our review, we will- These are look the things we'll look things. at. And like what you were saying, the part of another thing to look at is the mission statement of our yes. constabulary as it is has some of these values too. So to look at the review in that light 
is what we are saying we are that's what i say you're we may want to tweak the mission statement to include some of this language in our mission statement i wonder know? but she has kind of she's she's done all yeah. that i mean yeah. it it fits yeah. it goes it goes treatment of community you know to work with all segments of the community she's done that i right. just wanted to be clear that we're just restating it to follow I, the governor's yeah. Yeah, and I don't think anybody's saying that this has happened in the past or, you know, we're well, just that's saying, why he asked that question. We're, first. we're, we're, we're drawing answer. a line in the sand. We're moving forward. It's a new board. It's a new yeah. it's a new thought process. We're reacting to the governor's message. We're reacting to the national climate right now. And we're being very adamant and firm. And this is how we're going to proceed. Uh, and also you know, we can always improve and what we're learning from the national movement is that we all need to learn more about racism and white privilege. And it, it took me years to learn about racism and white privilege by going to expensive trainings to help me train to be less of a racist. But because I was born in America, I was raised racist. So there's a lot for us all to learn about white privilege. And when we hear there is no such thing as white privilege, it's a real opportunity for us to understand what it is from the perspective of people who feel like they're not privileged. And so this is an opportunity for increased education and to continue meeting that mission. B. If, if that's guess, what we do, let's keep doing it. I guess, Chris, I was just too poor to care about anybody else's skin color or, or any of that. We all grew up you. the same. We grew up in the same neighborhoods. We I hear you. But usually have any people, money. And, when you and, when people hear white privilege, they usually white people always say, "I was struggling financially." White privilege has nothing to do with money. Just keep that in mind. But I'm talking lifestyles too. I'm talking well, lifestyles. I do think it's really important to recognize one of the things that I think about a lot, that I reflect on a lot, is that our community is 95% white residents here, and I think that because of that, because we have so many. Um, we know that that will probably change. And we also have visitors coming to our community. So I think it's just really important that when we are doing this review process, revising, creating department guidelines, mm -hmm. that we consider that because it might not be so obvious in our community that that we would want to make everyone feel welcome and like they're being Aaron, I think that's the difference. You're a half a generation, you and Chris, off from me. I have never known in the town of Rochester, nor had the re need to know how many whites, Hispanics, black Indians, meaning American Indians, were here because it never mattered to me. Because as long as I treat everyone with the same respect, there isn't a problem. And that's just the way I look at life. And now it's become so spelled out. I, I have to go along, but it doesn't mean that it isn't something that I raised my son to do and my grandson. There's no differentiation. I don't care if you're green with pink polka dots and have Spock ears. You better, as far as my grandson and my son are concerned, if they laugh, I'm gonna pinch their ear. If there's any disrespect, they're gonna get smacked because there is no difference. People are people are people. And it's unfortunate that it had to come to this to bring it back around again, because this I went through all this in the 60s when we weren't even having it here. It, it was, and, and I get it, I understand it, but if I treat everybody the same, then I should never have a problem. And I think maybe more people need to think that way. If I treat, it doesn't matter how old or how young or how gray or how white or how pink or whatever anybody is. and and. I think that's amazing, B. It's really beautiful. I, I just, I just don't. Wanted to, I wanted to I let you know. I couldn't even been... tell you the breakup of, of nationalities in this town because I've never had reason to care. I've just that's really off fortunate. Of census data. Pardon? I, I was I'm just saying that was really fortunate data. because I've been having conversations with my friends in Kerhansen and Accord about racism, really? and one of them recently said blacks like to live in poverty. So we are living a racism. I know it's really sad. Well, and I, I have a neighbor that had a guest who was looking at house properties and had someone scream at her while she was look, driving by a property that was for sale, get out of my neighborhood. And she didn't feel safe here. So, you know, I think that's 
just like the community and what we want because of the values that our constables have because of the conversations we've been having about our constables mm -hmm. we want to just make sure doubly sure that like, i get that they're going to be the absolute best and that they'll that we will be reviewing what they do with that light so that everyone yeah. who comes here and everyone who lives here feels like they're treated fairly and equally um, by them. And I think it just, there's no problem looking at it. And I think it's important they have that training because I don't think anybody has ever accused any of our constables of being no, racist. I don't think so. However, the constable may respond to a call that's a neighbor to neighbor dispute that is at heart racist. And they're going to know have to know how to diffuse that situation, right. how to talk to those people, uh, you know, that are fighting, and 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 that's why I use the word those people. I mean, the people that are fighting. And <laughs> I I, got as that. I said it, I was like, somebody's going to. I know it away. came out of your mouth, but yeah. I'm, but but I'm my saying, point is, is yes. the constable needs to be trained in how to diffuse that situation. I we have a pretty good track record of our constables defusing yeah. neighbor to neighbor situations. Exactly. And I want to continue that. But yeah. and, and I don't believe we have had many, if any, and I I, I don't know for sure that involve races. And uh, we also want to make sure of, that but, but it doesn't mean it may not happen in the future. We also want to make sure that people of color that are here feel safe and comfortable calling the constables. And like that's another thing. If, if we want them to use the constables for something like a neighbor day to neighbor dispute, that they feel really safe in that. And, and it's, 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 it's partially people of color. It's, it's, it's partially anybody who is different from, from the vast majority of the population, uh, which could be many other segments as well, not just, uh, just color of skin. I'm so. very well aware. There's a family yeah. here who, um, are deaf and uh, the wife passed, but the dad is still alive and the, the kids all know sign. I learned a little, my son learned a little cause he went to school with the kid. So we could go visit and visit with the parents and that's just life here. But what I'm saying is I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill where there's none. That's all it worries me. And I don't think we are. I just no. think we're saying that we're, we're preparing our constables for what might occur is okay. the best way I, I can put it. We're preparing for what might occur in the future and having a having some talk discussion about it, having some some thought process, having guidelines about how to well, do it. I'm not situations. saying it's a bad yeah. thing. Yeah. I just I just don't want it to become all that's looked at, I guess well, is where I'm going. I think going if on. we yeah if we see I, I'm trying to yeah. yeah. Why don't we let Aaron read through the there for that may bring more continue. to light. So yeah, because I think I just the thrust of that statement is actually is and to improve constable and community relationships. Right. I got that. And yeah. that's really what we want to do. You know, that's really what we were asked to do yeah. too. Why don't, why don't you move on to the okay. to the therefore, Aaron? So, therefore, the town of Rochester town board adopts the following process for reviewing the constabulary. One, uh, in order to simplify our, our policies and procedures manual, and I can edit that, but I, I think I took this from your... Um, I think we should leave that there because, okay. well, no, it, the current is called policies and procedures, correct, Kate? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, so okay. I think there it should stay policies okay. and procedures because we're it. simplifying what exists. Okay, got it. Okay, so I'll, in order to just simplify our policies and procedures manual and seek advisement from those with law enforcement backgrounds, the board has created an ad hoc committee of residents with law enforcement backgrounds in order to generate a written report with recommendations to the town board on policies and procedures and the re recommendations of Peter Volkman, resolution 142 of 2020. Okay. I would in that one the second policies and procedures I think you can change to the guidelines because we're changing from policies and procedures. Recommendations to the town board on department guidelines. Yeah, I would agree with that, Mary Lou. Thank you. Okay. After the two, after the ad hoc committee report is issued. 
and in order to gain perspective from those in our community with expertise on modern community peace programs and their potential, and to engage town residents in the discussion, the town shall sponsor a moderated panel discussion and public forum with panelists with broad and diverse expertise and experience on the topic of peace officers and community policing. The panel can include, but is not limited to those with expertise in criminal justice reform, alternative peace officer models, peaceful de-escalation de techniques, special law enforcement issues facing rural communities, police reform advocacy, the history of constabularies in New York and our town, and those with a legal background in such issues. The panel discussion will be open to the public with a question and answer period. The town will do this in whatever way we are, the town is able to make it accessible while ensuring the safety and well-being of our residents during the COVID-19 pandemic. This may include, but is not limited to being held outdoors and being live broadcast with the option to call in. How soon do we think we're gonna be able to go live with people, Mike? We don't know. Right now we would be limited with, with uh, phase four or 50 people, which I don't think is fair to try to do this. Um, so I think we've got a, we're gonna have the report coming back yeah. uh, in mid, mid July. I, I don't know if you're going to have your report coming back in mid-July. Well, Has anyone the, asked the three people? They have not reached out to us and said that they aren't going to do it either, B. So I'm assuming that if I'm, they haven't asked. I'm well, wondering which way they would prefer to have it done. And I guess where I'm at, what I'm asking is uh, the ad hoc committee report is issued. We want to do the panel. In the beginning, you wanted to do the panel simultaneously. No, what, I, what I would suggest is that we meet in August, we see where the COVID situation is at that point, and yeah. we move forward into looking to schedule a date. Uh, maybe Aaron and Chris can start working on, on names of who you would like to include in that panel. I have a couple suggestions I'd like to suggest to you. And maybe, you know, and B and Adam, if you have any suggestions, if you can forward them to Chris and Aaron. We, we shouldn't have a lot of discussion about the names though right. through, through email. But if we see forward names to you and we can discuss them at the August meeting. Yeah, and after- In the meantime, we can reach out to people just to get their also, yes or no, they would like to be involved. Yeah. Also, I just, after our discussion um, and I, after talking to Mary Lou, you know, B, I think it'd be good to see the recommendations um, because there might be things that they recommend that then we would like someone to talk about. Like, you know, we, we want to see what they give us and then we can build on that and include some of that in with the people that we're thinking of, you know, panelists, um, potentially. It just doing it after. And I think, Aaron, that, that leads right up to your next point. If you want to move to the next point, yeah. that, that sort of says what the next step is. Yeah, so um, after considering input from the ad hoc committee and this town sponsored panel event and such other information and recommendation gathering activities as it may choose to engage in, the town board will draft a new resolution outlining the duties of the constabulary department, which resolution will be presented to the public for a reasonable period of public comment, after which time the board will consider the public's input, make revisions if needed, and vote on the resolution as same may be as same may be revised. What you're saying is there would be another public hearing, public, or would this be written to us to consider from the from the ad hoc or the panel? It would be comments we, from the panel. We would make we would make our resolution, and then we're saying we would allow there to be, you know. People could see that. It wouldn't be we like we would get it and then vote on it. We wouldn't it. vote on the resolution until we accepted public comments. It wouldn't necessarily be a public hearing process. Not, yeah, not a public hearing. But it's feedback on our resolution before we vote on it. Just like we've been doing where we talk about something and then at our next meeting we can, um, but that way the public has a chance to say. You okay, know, you've got the public there once with the moderator and whoever people are. Now you're going to send it back to the public. You don't. You're not com confident enough 
to make a decision after you take that first public comment? It's not sending it back to the public. It's, 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 it's not now we draft our resolution and we ask the public's input on our resolution, just like if we did a local law, but it's not a local law, it's a resolution. You have to do it for a local law, but you Agreed. don't have to do it for a resolution. Correct. But this is important enough that Aaron's, Aaron's suggesting we have feedback on our specific resolution which we won't draft till after we hear what the people say at the public forum. I think you think this is overkill. I don't, does anybody evidently no. nobody else thinks this is overkill. <laughs> no, I don't. I think this is an opportunity for us to really engage with our community. Yeah. And this is there's a reason why we started this process in the first place. Be at the end of the day, we are the five voting board members. Exactly uh, my point. So, and, so, and so we can choose not to listen to the board, to the public. But I, I agree with Aaron that put the resolution out there and let the people comment on the exact wording of it and, and get some feedback. Okay, here's my, as long as it's fair and it's balanced, just like we're gonna have the moderator at the panel, as long as this second discussion doesn't become a free for all, mm -hmm. just to hold us in check again, yet again, I will go along with that. But we, if we, it becomes we could a make it be all, written only. We there's a lot of ways we could. That's go. what I was suggesting. That's what I said. But initially. we don't have to decide that this moment. Yeah, you know don't. what I mean? No, but if she's going to do the resolution, let's put it in the resolution that a second public comment or a. a uh, after the resolution is read in public, another comment would come in written. If we open this up without a narrator, we're going to end up with a crazy but, meeting. But we don't have to set which way, either way right now. We're just saying we're going to have a public comment on the resolution. We can decide down the road what that is. Yeah, we, I, and also what I'm, the panel discussion, the way I'm, I'm seeing this as a town board sponsored community conversation right not like a public hearing or really we are just trying to get everybody to talk about these issues have this conversation that's because... the panel but then you're going back to the, with the resolution or the final draft of what we decide to the public again and although we are not um required to do this in the governor's executive order after things like this are written for the police department, they get commented on by the public. And again, we don't have to do it, but that is, is the way they'll be doing it with police department. Okay, can we add to this resolution or this piece of, of the whole picture? This second comment, if the board so desires at that time. You following me? I think we should have it. I think the format should be up to us to decide after after the forum, because I'm not going to predict what's going to come out of. Our OK, then put format the to be established by the town board. That's fine. Sure. Do that. Yep. For a reasonable period of public comment. Right. Uh, which form shall be established by the town board? How's that? That's cool. Which form will be established by the town board? Shall be even better. Which form shall be established by the town board by resolution? Thank you. So we'll establish it by a resolution. Okay. When 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 we create the resolution, part of our resolution will say we will have public comment period time. in whatever mm -hmm. format we choose right. to have it in. Does that sound fair? That's better. Okay. Great. Um, for. Uh, okay, I'm going to edit this already. <laughs> so you say the board will adopt department guidelines. Mm -hmm. yeah. The that board time. will adopt department guidelines uh, that will be in sync with the newly outlined duties. This will we also, take out newly and just say outlined duties because some yes, may be the, the same. Outlined duties, yes, because actually, well, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, this will also include a review of specific procedural strategies and tools, required training for all officers, hiring process, pay structure, complaint and disciplinary procedures, and coordination of administrative duties for the department. 
procedural strategies. Once again, I don't know, can we do that? Procedure, procedure set by the state. Well, I was looking for the other word, hold on. The state sets what we have the ability to do. They don't right. set, it's up to us to decide what they do. So the procedural strategies would be for whatever procedures for whatever we decide the constables can do. That's not up to us. That's set in state law. It's policy strategies that we can set. No, no, we're not setting the procedures, but we're setting the acts that they do, which then the procedures follow the acts. So maybe we, we say, which will include a, a review of specific uh, uh, constabulary uh, duties. The, the specific, specific policy strategies. Aren't we, aren't we doing that? Why don't we just put specific strategies? Yeah, that's great. There you go. Okay, I don't fair, know. Enough. fair enough. See that? Yeah. That's why you get the big Look at a lawyer taking words out instead of adding them. Can you imagine? <laughs> and I've I've actually added words, and you know I never do that. I also wanted to point out. So one of the one of the differences. Oh, sorry, my dog is barking downstairs. That's okay. It's okay. It's not that loud. Okay. I had kids screaming two hours ago. <laughs> one of the differences in this draft and the one that I presented before, uh, as Mary Lou pointed out, is. We'll, we'll probably be working on the department guidelines at the same time that we're working on the duties because we don't want to have to like adopt the duties and then wait for the department guidelines. Correct. Like we want to be able to do those kind of together. So what this taking Can you out, give me a definition of duties and department guidelines? Can you tell me the difference? Yeah, so the duties is the resolution, like um, resolution 03-2019 that the, you guys adopted last year, the board adopted last year, that states specifically what the constables can do. So that, that's like set by the town board. Then the so what is that? Is that a duty or a policy? No, that's a duty. The, 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 the New York State law says constant municipalities are allowed to have constabularies right. and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here i'm not saying the exact wording who who have new york state allows a list of of duties that we can assign to them we are not required to assign every duty that new york state law sets to them Correct. It gives us a range we can pick and choose which ones so that's what the duties are the policies follow the duties because the policies then say our policy is that they do this this and this our policy is what the duties are but we have to pick the duties before we write the policy right does that make any sense yeah i guess so yeah. there i'll there think is, on it a while I'll okay. let there enough. is a, an order to it because that as we were asked to do in peter volkman's report our department guidelines should match the duties, right? So we yes. have to make sure we do that. So we'll probably have a draft of the department guidelines that'll get started in the committee that we created. And then we'll be working on it as we're doing this so that um, we can then adopt it quickly after we adopt the duties. And the so, other things after strategies are all things that he recommended. Yes. We look at. He recommended. I just took we... that straight from him. Yep. Right. Okay. You want to move on, Aaron? Uh, five. The town board aims to complete this process expediently, with an aim to complete this by the end of the calendar year, December thirty first, twenty twenty. It's a lofty goal, but you got to have something. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll give it our best shot. Aim is the key word. Yes. And it's then not mandated. The six, uh, six, the board recognizes there might be ideas, feedback, or concerns that could call for an adjustment or revision of this process or the timeline outlined in this resolution. I'm fine with that too. Do the timeline we have, it's still, my question wasn't answered. The timeline we have set for the people on our ad hoc, are they comfortable with that timeline or are they going to exceed that? They may need more time. Well, 
but I'm leaving I'm leaving it up to them to notify us that hey we're not going to be done by that time. You know? Okay. I don't I don't I guess I think of things differently, B. I figure if somebody is assigned to do a job and they aren't going to get it done on time, it's up to them to tell us. Then to, for us to keep going, are you going to be done? Are you going to be done? That's the I way think I the it. group that you the the committee that you have um formed would tell you if they needed more time. I believe they would. So, but I just And they may come to us on the 15th and say, hey, we're not done. We not need more time. And but this resolution gives you time to change the procedures. And they're, um, they're, the, re the resolution we passed forming the committee, um, they're going to issue a report. They might say that they want more time in their report to consider right. with more detail. So that's what I'm saying. Well, I, I don't know. They may just say that outright and not do it. Well, let's, well, let's not assume that. Let's, let's deal with it if it comes up. You know, but the, the good thing in this resolution is if that does happen, this gives you the flexibility to change your timeline for the rest of the process and to change your procedures for the rest of the process if you need to. And an awful lot is out of our hands because the COVID situation is, mm -hmm. is that public forum is going to be hinging on the COVID. I mean, I would not want to have it. I personally would like to have it in public. I, Me I too. Think trying to do a Zoom is is be a little crazy. No, I, I think public um, is best. For I, that. Agree, I think we should do it in public. Uh, you know, um, do, quite frankly, just, I'm thinking we maybe look into doing it right out here in our town park, on a you know on an af on a Saturday afternoon or something or an early evening or I I, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm I not, don't know. I don't want to get into a whole discussion no, about when no, to have no, it right no, now. No, no, yeah. No. I, but, I, I agree. I just also want, there are tools we can utilize that allow us to have um, a virtual meeting that would be a lot easier to have than this. That's okay I, if people I, I have agree, computers. but I don't want to limit people from attending, yeah. Aaron. And my concern yeah. is there's so many people in our town who don't have broadband. Amen. Um, I, 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 think I think public meeting. Do, I think if we do both, we'll reach the most people. Do both, so you, what do you mean? Are you thinking we do a public meeting, but with a with a with a ability to view it online? Yes. And and okay. if someone wanted I could to accept ask a that. question, I could accept I that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. And just one small point. Uh, I, I, what do you think about changing the word aim to goal in the second to last clause? Sure. The second so there's not aim twice, right? Yeah, with a goal. With a goal to complete. Okay. Um I think we've all tracked the changes. They've been fairly minor. So, Aaron, I'm going to ask you to make this resolution. Yes. Um, so, I'd like to make the motion to accept this uh, resolution as amended. I'll second it. And Kate, were you able to track the changes? Did you have a copy of it? Yes. Okay. Um, I think we've discussed it. Uh, at length, so uh, I'll ask Kate for a roll call vote. Councilman Anawan? Aye. Councilman Hagen DePew? Aye. Councilman Hewitt? Aye. Councilman Paddock? Aye. Supervisor Baden? Aye. Thank you all. I think we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction, I feel. Um, you know, so I think we, we've taken a lot of hits many undeserved, but I think we're moving in the right direction. So um, with all that being said, I would like to, we'll, we'll push the other agenda items to a later time. None of them were urgent tonight. Um, does anybody have anything they wanna say in board member time? I don't wanna take that away from anybody. Chris. I, I just wanted you. to mention that I am accepting a gift from Meg Smith of $25. It's a Saunders Kill gift card and I'm donating it to the Rochester Food Pantry. You want me to show it or should I open it? Okay. Okay. So you so you received this unsolicited. I just want to be clear 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 on that. Yeah, I received it in my mailbox. It's a $25 Saunders Hill gift card. Mary Lou, you are okay? choosing to forward yeah, it. Yeah, up to $25 to... is is fine. You can accept a gift as long as it doesn't exceed $25. But you are publicly saying you're going to send it to the uh, Rochester Food Pantry? Yes. Great. Thank nice. you very much. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, then I would... Uh,
ask that we have a motion to adjourn in memory of all who are suffering from COVID uh, and uh, also in memory of, of Raymond Ellery from the former president of the uh, Accord Kerhonks and First Aid Squad who passed uh, sadly in a plane crash uh, in, in June, early June. So. so moved. Mike, I just want to mention, I think I sent seven companies that are disqualified. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In a personal chat. So Was it seven or six? Guess. One, I thought one, I counted six, three, but four, five, six. Okay. <laughs> six of the 12 did not, according to Chris, I will double check those and verify. Please, send, yes, and, please send yep, the list. Yep. And I'll send the list out to everybody. Uh, I don't want to name them publicly. So, no, no, but, that's why you're reading down to six. I will, yep. I will share that email tonight so you can know, but just know that I won't be able to verify it until Wednesday. Okay. Uh, but I'll send you that email right after this meeting so you you at least have the list and you can look yourself to see if you agree how's that sound see guys i've learned to be very lazy and that's why i did my non-collusions first yep <laughs> no problem. thank you uh, it's, it's disappointing because uh i'm betting some of those might have been good proposals but uh, uh yeah they, that was the sad part they, you know they, what? Really, they made they me are. good proposals but they didn't pay attention to detail yep yep exactly there you go <laughs> Exactly. Okay, uh, we had a motion to adjourn. Uh, is, is I don't know if I actually got a second. You seconded. Okay. No. Okay. No, we made it. I I made the motion. I'll, I'll second. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, oh, and and one more quick word of, I spoke to former Councilman Drabkin today. He sends his 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 good wishes, and he also said he doesn't miss the town board. <laughs> 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 so just yes. passing that on. <laughs> He's, on that he's note, got a lot Mike going Clayton. on in his life. He's a very busy man these days. That's good. But he 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 missed the people. He said. So I will pass that on to everybody. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, good meeting, and uh, we will see you all on the fifteenth. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.